The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Barry Church, Heckma Harrison, and Newey Scruggs. Play Lounge! Oh. Let's ride. Brought to you by Aristocrat Gaming. In the house, Heckma Harrison, former Cowboy Safety Barry Church is here on Newey Scruggs as we talk about the first place Dallas Cowboys. All right. I'm back. One and one. One and one. Struggle. Yeah. First place. Tied with Washington. Oh! Tied with <laughs> Philadelphia. Hey, you know, came on, you know, we came unglued over there. Yeah, you all right? Age, I got dropping glasses. Giants are, Giants are 0-2. It's amazing what one win by the Atlanta Falcons and Kirk Cousins in <laughs> prime time can do to shift your viewpoint. The viewpoint yesterday, people were mad. People were upset. Then you wake up, well, okay. I'm not as mad as I was before. Oh, right, right, right. So the Eagles lost. Right, the Eagles 24 lost. hours. Ah, <laughs> yeah, a new, a new, new, you new did clock. say 24 hours. Yeah, a new clock. Yeah, ah. yeah. yeah. Now you're watching somebody yeah, this, else's. This, uh, ah, it don't feel so bad no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're watching somebody else's fan base. Yeah, you know, mad at oh, the man. coaches. Hey, oh. Chernobyl. Mad at Chernobyl this so, morning. That's a tough place to play, man. Hey. That media up there, man. I, Hey, but don't kill him more. Kill no more. No more. No more. Uh, with, with your point, uh, Demarco Murray found that out. Oh my goodness. Demarco hate. Demarco Murray hated us. He hated the Dallas media. Mm. Oh, wait, then he found out the harder way. Right. Wait, you get a load of this up there, big guy. Them boys is rough up there, man. Right. You know, you saw, you saw how long Demarco Murray lasted. Yeah, not long. Mm. Diet Coke, one, one, one calorie, one year, and he was gone. We went, to Tennessee, yeah. right? we went down to Tennessee. Uh, so, yes, and to your point, uh, Jalen Hurts is getting tore up by his own fan base today. Yeah. Uh, people, I mean, people are on him. Um, they are killing the quarterback. Well, it's, just, it's just how they are. I mean, they, they eat their own. What did he do? Uh, they want Sirianni fired. <laughs> They are done with Kellen Moore already. Oh, two weeks, he's out of there. They're done with there. Kellen Moore, and and they really are ready to fillet defensive coordinator Vic Fangio. So not the blueprint. Yeah, the blueprint. The blueprint. The, the, blue, the, blue the blueprint. So yeah. Philly fan, Philly fan is mad. Um, they're giving yeah. Saquon Barkley. A, some people are giving Saquon Barkley a little bit of a pass. Other people are like, dude, he can't catch. He's never been able to catch. <laughs> I, it's, I mean, I I really did. Have a enjoyable time listening to WIP radio yeah. uh, in Philadelphia, driving around this morning. So yeah. It was fun. It was. It was. It yeah. was I ain't gonna lie, man. It was a guilty pleasure just to listen to those folks just cook up their own team, man. That's a rough place to play. I mean, damned if you do, damned if you don't up there. I mean, it's it's tough. I mean, and I get it. For the the Philadelphia Eagles have never really had the greatest of defenses out there, but yesterday for about at least, you know, three quarters of that game, they played decently. Right. You know, second half, Kirk Cousins started to get on fire a little bit, but it ain't like he was throwing up a barn burner out there and was no. torching them boys. No, like, he wasn't. You know, they had a terrible last drive defensively, yeah. you know, and it was god-awful. I mean, you giving up that, they, you know, they scored within about 58 seconds mm -hmm. uh, of getting that kickoff right there, and you hate to see it. They played a little bit of zone coverage out there, and Kirk Cousins ate him alive. The pass rush was non-existent that last drive, and it tore him up. But it ain't like they was just giving up, you know, 45 points at halftime or anything like that. I mean, <laughs> 35, 35 points at halftime <laughs> on, or anything you, like that. You. But, <laughs> I mean, it, they, you know, that that that's up there. And that fan base, they, they tearing them cats up alive. And then you look at, you know, K Moore up there. You know, if he goes in there and, they, and, and your boy catches the ball, Saquon Barkley catches the yeah, ball. Yeah, talk about that. Talk about they're that. They're praising my guy. Yeah. But now he drops the ball. <laughs> oh, what type of, why wouldn't you do this? Why wouldn't you do that? I mean, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Not really. Because to me, once again, it's, this is Kellen Moore. I'm a, you know, I'm a smart guy. I'm a genius. I dialed this up. Yeah, you dialed it up. But if the player doesn't execute it, you lose. So Bill Parcells, when he was used to say, he, he said, never trust the players because the players every time. Every time. <laughs> every time. So Kellen Moore trusted this dude who drops a lot of passes. And what did he do? He went out there and dropped it. But this, when, ain't, but, this, but, but what, this guy. But like, what were you? What, okay, who was the bigger opponent at that point in time? The Falcons or the clock? Time. Thank you. 
But Thank we you. acting like you know they Burn had three seconds. minutes to score. No, Burn. if they would, if they even if they would have got that first down, kicked the field goal, they would have or got stopped. Let's say they run the ball and get stopped on that they on that burn third down. They, they didn't have any more time. They would have still had 50-some seconds left on the clock to score. Yeah. They left Philadelphia 39 okay. seconds on the so clock. So you got there that. It is. A- add in the fact that Sirianni didn't kick the field goal early on as well. What are we doing? What are we doing? So so it's it's these moves. For me, this is the constant stuff where you got guys who are getting too smart. When really, Hackman, the, simple football is what it calls for. Hey, man, kick three points. Let's run down the clock. Yeah. Run down the clock and try to give them as little time as possible. But – Man, we go. I got this great play. He was open. He just got hands of stone. <laughs> no, it, 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 what it comes down, what it really comes down to, and I think what people are, because because I agree with both of you, and I agree with you. It's a two yard route. If he if he catches the ball, then he looks great. If he, but he misses it, there's three things happen on a pass play. Either he is complete, incomplete, or it's an interception. Those are the three things that you're looking two at, right? Bad. It, Right, two of them bad, <laughs> and that's what's gonna happen. All right, and, and in that situation, you needed you you need two of those things hurt, could have hurt you. But you only needed one thing to go right, and the one thing that you needed to go right didn't go right, and what that did consequently is it stopped the clock, and that's why we're talking about time right there. And for me, at that point, that Sirianni earlier, and just back up from there, when Sirianni declined the penalty. And and went with the tush push, and I think it was like third and in inches, whatever it was, fourth or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. He got the first down. That that signified to me that they was just gonna run this timeout. That whatever it was, they're gonna play the time game. And if they got, and I didn't even think they were gonna take a field goal. I thought they were gonna get down there and just maximize the fact that I'm gonna give you a short field, and you got to do a 95 play drive, 95 mm-hmm. yard drive would have been the smarter thing to do. To me, look. It, like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. If you have success there, everybody's praising you. You look like a genius. But to me, Barry, it was the risk-reward of it. There was no there was no reward in that other than, other than the hit. risk. No, you're risking. It's, it's third and three. Third and three. Third and three. If you run the ball, 40-second clock, you burn that time. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, you, you at that give, point. You still give Atlanta 50-some seconds left. Because it was like a minute, thirty nine minutes, forty seconds left. Their drive was it was either seventy yards or eighty yards because they because they had to kick they kicked the field goal, then they had to kick off. So their drive took a minute twelve seconds, right? They it was 49, 46 seconds left. They left thirty something seconds on the clock for for the Eagles. And let's and let's just say this: look, the the Eagles defense was sloppy. In that last minute, that was all right, terrible. that was terrible. terrible. I, and I don't, and I don't want to say that they were in a prevent, but their safeties were so far back that they even invited everything underneath. And Kirk Cousins was just on, you know, he was in his bag. And guys, and I'm, I'm guilty of this because I never liked Kirk Cousins, and I never liked no. I, <laughs> and the reason I never liked Kirk Cousins is because he played for the Commanders. Yeah. I'm blinded by my hate for yeah. these other teams, so I never liked him. Even when he was in Minnesota, I still yeah. you like that. You know, I just he never just, liked, he ain't like it. Yeah. No, but last night, that was a great line. Last last night, I was like, yo, Kirk Cousins is back there. Dialing it, boy. He Knocking is, the rest off. He is Knocking the rest off. <laughs> And that's the, yes. other, that's the other thing the Philly fans are mad about. Man, man, this is this guy. This guy. This yeah, guy like who that. in prime but time. Kurt, but Kurt had that. I mean, come on. He had that whistle on him yesterday. But, but yeah. that's what I'm just saying. That's yeah. what the, fan, the, the Philly fan base is like. Man, it's a guy that never does nothing. But what does he do against fans? You know, what does he do? Light us up. <laughs> you, go out there, like, you like that? Yeah, he's showing us. We're not going to like that. What'd he go? <laughs> and if you're Darius Slay, what are you doing on now, that You know what he's doing. You know what Darius you know, Slay is you, doing. You, he's you like, he's trying to gamble. Man. He's trying to gamble. But I, I, I get and, He's a veteran. This is there's There's different. You know, there's opportunities where you can gamble for that. Yeah. And if that's the case, why are, you're in man-to-man coverage. Why are you looking at what Kirk Cousins is doing in the backfield? Like what Kirk going to do? What is he going to do in that situation? <laughs> One leg. He didn't look at the receiver until the receiver caught the ball for a touchdown. No. And I'm sitting there but that like. But that was a hell of a huh? move by London, though. That was a hell of a move. He hit him with a one-two. <laughs> but I'm it's like. It's You big yeah. place, place, late. Like, yeah. He's supposed to be one of the top corners in the league. Used to be. Yeah, that is true. And the red zone things happen so fast. Well, I just don't get the. But the, that's, that but that's why Eagles fans really. are so ticked off. Is because first of all, you presented all offseason that you were going to have this defense that was going to come out to people. You presented, you know, I got the new Georgia defense. Mm. All these first rounders that you have out there that are not producing. You're not getting the pass rush that you were once promised. Mm. You don't look as aggressive even on the back end with the linebackers. So mm. I mean, you look at you look at. 
and, and one of the things, one of the great takeaways from this game was the running games by both the running game by both teams. I mean, mm-hmm. Bijan Robinson, he was toting that. Down. He is for real. <laughs> all right, and as much as they minimize the running game in the league, I mean, running backs don't matter that much anymore. <laughs> you are a lie. Because it does matter. And you see those good teams that are winning because of they have a good running game, Saints. All right. And you're seeing those things start to come to the forefront. And I'm telling you, the running back position is way more valuable than people give credit to. And that was just, in, in spite of everything, what people are not saying this morning is how good that game was. That was a good, that was a good game. And we understand that coaching is so nuanced. And, look, you could t- say the Sirianni blew it, your defense blew it, or whatever. Yeah. You you just lost to a team that wanted it more than you. That's facts. Heck, let me just uh, add on to what you talked about here. So, Atlanta, 152 rushing yards. They mm. averaged 5.4 tote. Mm. You ain't winning with you ain't, you... On the other side, <laughs> Philadelphia, 186 yards of rushing. They averaged five. Yeah. Oh, a tote. So um, early on in the running. season, yeah. we're watching teams run like crazy. And my question to you is how much of the fact that you're not tackling in training camp and now you only have two preseason, preseason games and most of your good players are not playing in those games, are we seeing effects in this that it's going to take defenses a couple – games to get going here? Oh, 100%. I mean, because even in, in training camp when you get full pads on, the starters out there, you're told to thud up. You know, you're never told to bring to the ground. So, when you get out there in preseason games, back, you know, when I was playing and the starters actually did play, that's when you got your first taste of actually tackling somebody. You know, right. not just thudding up, wrapping up, letting them run. you actually going for the legs, wrapping him up, making sure you come up with a body part to signify that that guy is down. Now you don't see that at all. You know, yeah. the Cowboys starters, they didn't play all preseason games. So, when you get to these first couple games, at least the first four games, it's the first taste these guys are really having of bringing somebody to the ground and tackling. Yeah. And you see it out here, game in and game out, guys whiffing on tackles, just throwing shoulders in there and guys just bouncing off. Like, this is yeah. this is the national football. You got to wrap these guys up. And so these first couple games, you're going to see some terrible tackling and that's what we've seen so far from the defenses. Yeah, it's it's what's been kind of different to me is you know, I, 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 would, I would go there only if I wasn't watching B. John Robinson make two guys miss. <laughs> you know? I, would, I, would, I would go there if Saquon Barkley wasn't, you know, running off these runs and stiff arming guys, I mean, and, and dragging dudes with them. And mm-hmm. yeah, I think the intention is there. These are professional athletes. And I don't want to give, you know, or, or take anything away from who they are. And I know the rules have changed a lot on hitting and things like that. God has tried to, you know, not make it look like it's so forceful. I don't, and those are all excuses. You're not getting these guys down, and you're making your defense pay. But I just think that those running backs yesterday were so dynamic. And to me, I'm like, I'm watching old school smash mouth football, mm-hmm. and you just you just got to button your trench strap and do something about it. I mean, and, and to me, Atlanta's running game is reminiscent of the Saints' running game. And man, you get you attacking those edges, and it takes literally everybody for four quarters to be able to stop it. Atlanta's for real. Yeah, Atlanta is for real. That's what happens when you got a dynamic runner in the backfield. Oops. Able to do those things. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, it's a problem. <laughs> give Raheem Morris, the new head coach of the Falcons, a lot of credit. That's a big win. Yeah. And I don't know what they did to unlock Kirk Cousins because when they had to have it, this guy went down the field and delivered like he he had not delivered before. Mm-hmm. So yeah. In the prime time. Yeah, in prime time. So what we're seeing now, go back to this, and, and we'll, we'll take a break and di- dive more into the Cowboys. Dallas is now in first place. So the loss to the Saints, while it stings. <laughs> right on. It stings. <laughs> You're watching, you're watching other teams around the league with the same similar feeling. In yeah. San Francisco, they're not feeling good. You got beat at Minnesota. Now Debo Samuel's going to miss Ooh. some weeks. Christian McCaffrey's on IR. Yeah. Uh, here in Detroit, you know, you win your first game in overtime against the Rams. You're feeling good. And and now you've been beaten. And, at and, home. and got beat at home by Tampa Bay. So just a little bit of feel good for Cowboy fans. I want to at least give that in a second. Hey, you feel good, baby. Yeah, they got their ass kicked. I loved it. <laughs> so you're still, you're still, you're still, you're still feeling decent? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's early in the season. Yeah, I mean, go, go let him win. What you talk? But you know, I was gonna rep anyway. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, I was gonna rep anyway. Wow. You know that? How soon we forget? No, I mean, hey, we lost. They lost. <laughs> okay, but they lost. Levels, huh? There's levels to L's. There is, but it's just one. It's just one. <laughs> it didn't count. It didn't count twice. Right. It counted once. <laughs> right. Come now. on. 
if, if the South, if the NFC South is it, it can, can continue this, uh, this may go the way I thought when I had the Cowboys winning ten games and the division, because I don't think the division will be as will good. Be as good? Yeah. That's just my thought about mm. it. Oh. Heck, my hair is very church. Yo, yo, I knew he scored. Yo, how you get hey, to do that? Hey, because that's because that's how you make fifteen innings. That boy, yeah, good. that's how you. That boy, good. That boy, good. That boy good. Ain't he good? Sir. Yes, Thank sir. You very much. Players Lounge brought to you by Mister Game right good, here, man. Dallas Cowboys. This loss on you, Hickman. <laughs> <laughs> but the wins. On- hey there, Cowboys Nation. Kyle Yeomans here, sharing that same team that brought you Buffalo, bringing NFL casino games that show America's team on and off the reels. Aristocrat is changing the game with a new experience. Football fans, this means you can pick your team and play your team. Check out the Cowboys-themed casino games developed by Aristocrat, a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Gambling problem? Please contact the U.S. National Problem Gambling Helpline at 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-G-A-M-B-L-E-R for 21 and over. Hey, Cowboy fans, I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. But lately, I've been learning a new game, crypto. Sound confusing? Don't worry. Even us pros were rookies in crypto once. That's why I trust Blockchain.com. They make crypto easy. No confusion. Using jargon, just the tools to help you win. Prescott keeps it, slides with a first down. Invest like your icons, where everyone is a rookie in crypto with blockchain.com. Perfect throw, my goodness. Wow, did he ever thread the needle. Visit blockchain.com slash cowboys to get started. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the Playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboysvip. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboysvip. Are you the 2024 Dallas Cowboys Fan of the Year? The Dallas Cowboys and Captain Morgan are celebrating extraordinary, inspiring, and original fans. Nominate yourself or the biggest Cowboys fan you know for a chance to be named the 2024 Fan of the Year and win prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash Fan of the Year. Go Cowboys! To the Players' Lounge. This segment of the Players' Lounge was brought to you by Yeti. Yeti, official cooler and drinkware of the Dallas Cowboys. Thank you, Heck. That's, that's better, right? Yeah. You're that's better, right? You're getting there, man. Yeah, that's you're getting, better, right? You're getting there, man. Just saying. He's coachable. Yeah. The man's yeah, coachable. Yeah. Quarterback of the Panthers next. I mean, just keep on rolling. Yeah. <laughs> Kid show. Never mind. Yeah. <sighs> Shout out to Bryce Young. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Bryce Young. It's not an easy game. Brother. It's not, not an easy. easy game. It's not. If I'm Bryce Young, the thing I feel good about is they ran off Baker Mayfield. Yeah. They ran off Sam Darnold. Yeah. You know, there, there is hope for you after you leave Carolina. There, 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 there is true. Uh, you know, they traded away Christian McCaffrey. They traded away Brian Burns. Uh, they told Cam to hit the road. I mean, this is an organization. That, I mean, they make some bad moves. So, I would, I would, look, I agree. It wasn't right what they did to the brother after two years. I mean, we give him a little bit more grace than that. Give him a better offensive line. Give him more weapons. All of those things. But when you look, Bryce Young even coming out of <laughs> Alabama. The first pick in the draft, you – I mean, I don't know many – like Doug Flutie, a lot of other guys, I mean, but the measurables to me were very important. Mm-hmm. And, like, I mean, the success rate, he, he was going to have to play above and beyond anything we'd ever seen him do. And when that didn't come to fruition and people didn't see him, like, take his game to another level in the NFL, you knew that he was going to be limited. You knew that because of his height – Seeing a lot, you know, all making his reads, all of the, he didn't have an offensive line, mm-hmm. and if you want to keep this kid and keep him keep him in a healthy headspace, you better pull him now because if man, going back to that New Orleans game, they battered that kid, yeah, they beat him up, yeah. and <laughs> if he was gonna take if he was gonna take fifteen more games <laughs> of that, if this is just oh we're gonna leave him in there and it's a trial by fire at the end of it. Nah, he'd, he'd have, he'd have been down. punch drunk. Yep, it was over with. You said two years. He didn't get two years. I mean, you got two games. You know, <laughs> one year under a different coach. Here's a new system. 
with a guy who, by all accounts, the head coach Dave Canales gets a lot of credit for Baker Mayfield's resurgence last year. Two games in this, I just think this is the owner, David Tepper, mm. that got involved. And, and heck, it's not like they just figured out his height. They knew this. Yeah. They, they yeah, had the number one true. pick. That they traded true. up. They 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 had a choice. C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young. Yeah. They knew everything. Oh, and yeah. They, and, and, mm-hmm. and, oh, by the way, you read the accounts. While the owner won't say it, everyone else says this is who the owner wanted. And then there are reports that Frank Reich and other people wanted, wanted C.J. Stroud. Stroud. Yeah, but, mm-hmm. I mean, look, it, buyer's remorse, call it whatever you want to. You sold yourself a dream. You stuck with him. I mean, at this point, they can't do anything about what they have. If they leave this, if they left him, Bryce, if they <laughs> left him in there for the entire year, dog, he wouldn't be the same quarterback at the end of the year. He, I mean, or he would have went out injured i don't know i mean one they the can't two. one of the two because they can't protect them and, and so now okay you, you ask this question and by the way the cowboys faced the panthers uh, in december mid-december down there in charlotte what does andy dalton really do what does he really do for you for, in terms of okay you want to say maybe you're more competitive but if, if Bryce Young is not the answer and you're going to stink, well, go stink all the way so you can go in the, go in the draft and, get and go you, get some yeah. help. But this this whole thing of, what well, are you trying to be, 500? Where, where, where are you going to go with this? And where does it take you? No way. I, you know, I, I'd love to know. And I think, Hackman, you hit on the right point. There's no O-line. There's no playmakers. No weapons. Mm-hmm. No you got ground game. You got rid of DJ Moore. You received You got rid of Christian McCaffrey. You, you've got rid of real pieces. Who's your lead? Who's Thielen? Thielen's your top yeah. guy right now? <laughs> Chuba, Chuba Hubbard? Chuba Hubbard? Sure, man. Miles Sanders? Like, what? Come on. What we got here? Depending on Big 12 properties. Yeah. What we got going on here, yeah, man? No, that's a, it's a no, bad. No, Patrick Mahomes, Big 12. Yeah, it's a, it's, a bad place. It's, a bad place. it's a bad place to be. And that's why I'm saying, you know, for Bryce Young, I, with a lot of people, there was a lot of reaction to him getting pulled. And I was one of those people, like, after watching that New Orleans tape, I was like, this kid ain't going to make it. He's not going to make it. He'll be a shell of himself if he continues this because this offensive line is not protecting him. They don't have a running game to make any of those defenses get back at bay or at least load the box so he can have some easy throws to throw into. Nothing was routine about what Carolina's doing. And what is Andy Dalton going to do? Make him stink a little less? I don't know. <laughs> no run game. None at all. No, no reliable tight end to throw the ball to. You know, no real deep threat receiver. I mean, you just you just look right here, you're like, okay, so, so what do you have? No O line. <laughs> no owner. Now, now, he's, <laughs> now you're asking a short man to come out here. He's a quarterback and a magician. Yeah, you know that's I mean? just, that's what you're looking for. Right. Yeah, yeah. right. What, 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 man? yeah, so it's it's wild when you when you think about that. And and that goes and underscores one more time of after the Saints game, the the Cowboy fan that that is dramatically just you know ready to throw Dak overboard. I I, I saw a bunch of things on on my Facebook That's page. Ridiculous. This is what you get for sixty million. Dot dot dot. And and I just that simply, came with the money, right? Comes yeah. with the money. Comes with the money. But look around the league. Look around the league. Yeah, there's a lot of issues around the league. I mean, like yeah, just like Jalen Hurts. Hey. <laughs> We got issues. issues. We got issues in Philly. Can we? Can we get there? Can we, don't nobody want to say it. Huh? I got. I got to be the only one to say it. Huh? Issues, Come man. on now, quit and playing who, with it. Especially not, defensively. No. Since that Super Bowl game, bro, it's been. It's. It's. There are limitations, yeah. and I, I get it. He didn't have AJ Brown, so there's some grace in that also. But yeah. come on now. Yeah, it's ugly up north. <laughs> it's ugly out here. Yeah. He's at least he's, <laughs> up north. Outside of the tush push. It's, 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 <laughs> hey. Throwing the ball. It's ugly, man. <laughs> they they kill him. So, so uh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I was there yesterday when Mike Zimmer, Cowboys defensive coordinator, <laughs> talked, and he, he took the blame. He said it was him. He said they didn't have any practices all uh, off, I mean, uh, during training camp where, where he saw anything close to what he saw against the Saints. Man, hell no, nah, so, man! I ain't trying to hear none of that one. Man. So he said, <laughs> "He said, I ain't hear this. What are, he's what? going to fix it." Says he's, says he's going to fix man. it. <laughs> then this morning, I was listening to Bill Polian, the, the former general manager. And Bill Polian says. You know, Quinn scheme, Zimmer scheme, very different. Says so it's going to take them a few games oh. to, to get going. But he said, trust Zimmer. We ain't hear none of that after week one. No, he didn't. We ain't hear none of that. It's going to take a little bit. You know, trust the process. All that. We ain't hear none of that. You trying to tell me. Mm-hmm. You had all week leading up to, to New Orleans game. 
And they had all that tape after what they just did to Carolina Panthers. And you ain't you ain't seen none of the, the schemes? You ain't seen none of that approach coming into this Cowboys game? Yeah. Man, come on, man. That, that that makes no sense to me right there. That you're going to sit there and, and tell the people, hey, they gave us some looks that we didn't see. So you so, so we ain't prepared? Yeah. Is, 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 that what, is that what's going on? Yeah. I mean, come on, man. Make it make sense to me, heck. Make I, it make I, sense. Look, man. I can't. I can't. And what I what I have what I have done for a long time in my career is interview coaches, and I know coaches will talk in metaphors and coaches speak and all of the, and won't give you a straight line answer. And you know whether it's him falling on his sword and saying that look, these are the things that happen, and not laying blame that we can clearly see. You mm. know, which mm. everybody's turned into a scout now. Look at Exhibit A. You know? oh, all you gotta do is look. Everybody got. Everybody got. Look right here, number ninety-eight. And, <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad time. It's a bad time because everybody got all twenty-two, right? So, I mean, no matter what, no matter what uh. Zimmer, no matter what he says, I think people can look. At the film themselves and look at the game and say, nah, man, I mean, look, Barry Church, you said back in during OTAs, he's like, the one thing I worry about about Zimmer is this too high safety. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, I hear a lot of people talking about that saying, using that that's word for word what Barry says, so would you please give credit to the author? I've been saying, all right? I'm just saying. saying but in, in that situation during the New Orleans game, he's trying to maneuver his he's trying to maneuver his, his safeties up. He's trying to do a lot of different things to load the box, and it doesn't work. And you, you guys are out flanking. And, and there's nothing you can do when your one and your three technique is being driven 10 yards off the ball. There's not a defense designed to work with failure like that internally. So, look, I, I, I completely respect Zimmer going up there and saying, look, this was on me. and Because that's what coaches will yeah, generally they do. do. They'll do that. But, man, no. <laughs> what happened to, you know, no. man, we only had – this is only a fourth of the of the playbook we got. I mean, we, we only showed a little bit of it. Clearly, we got answers. For, yeah. Going forward, we had answers. For, and then you can come out here and get man on man beat down like that? Yeah. That that is a little confusing on, on my part, at least. I've got more. <laughs> but wait. <laughs> but wait. But wait. <laughs> but wait. <laughs> Hold up. I asked Mike Zimmer a question. I said, what have you seen after two games from Mozzie Smith? And he talked about you know, shedding shedding the block a little better. He wants me to shed the block a little bit better. But then he just said uh, he was not displeased with Mozzie. Mm. What, what you tell me all the time? It's not what... They don't say it's what they don't say or something like. It's one of the, I'm not displeased. I'm not displeased. But not you displeased. ain't pleased. You ain't happy. About it. Exactly. <laughs> hey, exactly. Yeah. And I think what's helping Mozzie in this situation was the even worse play from the veterans that we had brought in there. And we talking about Joseph and we talking about Phillips because when you look at it, you already said it. Heck, when you look at that film, I mean, you want to talk about no white tees in the club. I mean, you you can't have your three tech. You can't have your nose getting pushed. 10, 8 yards back into the into the defensive to backfield the like that. The offensive line, to, to the uh, line, outside linebacker spot and, way back there. And it's not even like it was getting doubled. These, yeah. these are one-on-one. -on -one. One -on where my man is just getting displaced. Mm -hmm. So, and, I, and that's the thing with me. when it, I didn't believe it was all about the scheme. I just think it was man-on-man, -man, as Marinelli used to say, bone-on-bone, -bone, and they just got whooped. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's what it comes down to in my opinion. Yeah, when, when it when – it, uh, I think that you sent us the the PFF grade. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love oh, it? Oh, <laughs> brought out the PFF. <laughs> when you get when you get the PFF grade and Mozzie grades out higher, you know, and you said to yourself, okay, 30 percent, twenty eight percent, twenty six percent. It's like, yo, we all failed the exam. <laughs> Nobody did Curved any grade, good. Huh? It was it was bad, and and. For me, I'm 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 done. I, I said it before, man. I, I don't want to beat up on Mozzie, period. Because if you have it, you have it. If you don't, you don't. And I think it's apparent when you start seeing certain things that you don't have it. It's easy to reach block him. He's not explosive off of the ball. I mean, he's I, – I tell you what, he's – He's not as maneuverable as he was last year. You saw those offensive linemen yeah, literally turning yeah. him, his back turned to the line of scrimmage and pushing him out like that. And I mean, you know, I ain't seen that, you know, so I guess that's growth. <laughs> I'm going to call that growth.
<laughs> but hey, 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 other than other than that, man, it's it's just a lot of bad tape. And let's not let Osa, let's not let Osa dig nah, well. miss this criticism also he's because Osa well. didn't have his best showing either. Nobody did. No. So nobody did, especially when you give up 190 yards on the ground mm. and uh, on 39 carries. That's that's ugly work, man. And yeah, team, you better believe that the Baltimore Ravens are gonna come in here licking their chops and saying, <laughs> "How do we get this train?" on the tracks, we run the damn ball. If we got to give Henry the ball 25 times, we run the ball 40 times, we're going to do it in this game at AT AT&T Stadium. Yeah, that's rough. No white tees in the club. No white tees. No fitted caps. Yeah. No open-toe shoes. None of that. None of that. None of that. It's, It's rough. It's rough. It's hard to, you know, it's a lot of blame to pass around, so... And they're still in first place. They are. Yeah. They are. Yes, sir. And I can't wait to see the Eagles. The Eagles play the Saints next week. That, uh, that Thursday night? Where is it at? I, I don't know, but I know that's who's playing. I can't wait to it's see. It's in New Orleans. It's in New Orleans. Ooh. It's going to be some second line. Voodoo. It's mm. going to be the second line. And I'm telling you, New Orleans Saints. They're still here in Arlington. I don't know if they're going to make it back. Listen. They're going to get they're back still, in time. Still, New Orleans Saints. New Orleans Saints. Anyway. New Orleans Saints fans, they got a legit enemy in me, boy. Because I'm telling you, when the Cowboys go to New Orleans to play, I'm going. Yeah, you going Because <laughs> we're going to second line up out there. Gonna, they can't do that in my stadium, dog. They can't do that. They can't do that. They had a parade in my. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's not like they brought a boom box and walked out on the field. Man, they, no, they bought a tuba. Player, they bought a, player, a tuba a player, and a French game. horn. There's no, there's <laughs> How the no, hell no. they get a French horn up in here, bro? The, the Niner thing is that's that's still the most. That, that's that's the all timer for me. Yeah. I mean, the two, you know, San Francisco has committed to two all timers. Disrespectful things. And, and yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm the with boom you. box before the playoff game and then back in Texas State. But they've been doing the boom box, though. They had the boom box all year year they just brought it in as in the playoffs it wasn't the first time they've used it okay thank you Beam. okay well they they, they, they be quiet yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll save it for the break yeah, right. we, we don't curse on the ship we don't curse on the ship the saints bought a tuba aristocrat gaming <laughs> mm. is the sponsor of the players lounge right here on dallascowboys.com i'm cowboys alumni danny mccray here with Smoothie King asking, what's that sound? That's the sound of me sipping one of their power Pack smoothies with over 10 grams of protein. With real fruits and organic veggies because at Smoothie King, what you see is what you sip. So grab a delicious Smoothie King smoothie, throw a straw in your jaw, and get sipping real. Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. Hey there, Cowboys Nation. Kyle Yeomans here, sharing that same team that brought you Buffalo, bringing NFL casino games that show America's team on and off the reels. Aristocrat is changing the game with a new experience. Football fans, this means you can pick your team and play your team. Check out the Cowboys-themed casino games developed by Aristocrat, a proud sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Gambling problem? Please contact the U.S. National Problem Gambling Helpline at 1-800-GAMBLER. That's 1-800-G-A-M-B-L-E-R for 21 and over. Raising Cane's presents the other rules of football. Rule 1, any broadcast without the express edition of cook-to-order Cane's chicken fingers is prohibited. Rule 12, no crinkle-cut fries, Texas toast, or craveable cane sauce constitutes an illegal formation. And Rule 31, anybody who loves to feed their game face is an eligible receiver of Cane's. When it comes to winning game day, Cane's rules. Raising Cane's chicken fingers. One love. Go Cowboys. Back to the Players' Lounge. (laughs) 
Come shop at the Star of Frisco on Saturday, September 28th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Flea Styles Market at the Star, presented by Marker Place by Michaels, featuring 50-plus local makers. Offering art, fashion, home decor, jewelry, and kids' items, Market at the Star is always a favorite. Admission is free. Visit thestardistrict.com for more information. Ah, aristocrat gaming man y'all rough can't stop won't stop brings us to show <laughs> playing slack right here this man off the airway <laughs> Jack. take that take that <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough what it's a tough life uh, the whole world right. the whole world, the whole world it ain't right it ain't right the whole world, Jerry man. Jones today on 105.3 <laughs> The Fan talking about the money back situation <laughs> Can't nobody hold him down, he's saying. Yeah, Quote, what he's saying. <laughs> necessarily, he says he doesn't necessarily see a change this week that involved Dalvin Cook. So that's that's GM Jerry telling us, yeah, we, 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 we okay in the running back spot. So <laughs> we asked Mike this question to media scrum mm-hmm. yesterday. So Mike, once again, tells us all this good stuff about Dalvin Cook. And, and a part of me is – Iffy because he said a bunch of good stuff about Malik Davis. Mm-hmm. Told you I wasn't buying it. Mm-hmm. Wasn't buying it. Mm-hmm. And then they had cut Malik Davis. So I'm hearing all this nice and piece of stuff about Dalvin Cook, but I start to get to the point where I'm like, when we saw what was unveiled, that Deuce Vaughn is getting runs before Zeke. Well, if you're gonna do that, then at some point in time, you better throw Dalvin Cook out there because so far what we have seen is not working. It's not working. And by the way, I think your guy, Zeke's going to have to average 46 or 49 yards a game the rest of the way to get yeah. that 700 you talked about. Yeah, 6 for 16. That was not the look that we were looking for. Uh, oh, wait, what? But, <laughs> that was not the look. That was not the one. 6 for 16. And look, hey, I, hey. I will I will say this. I'll admit that the game was out of control. I mean, if, if you want to continue to run the ball at this point, third and fourth quarter, you was going to have to be playing, paying for behind, and you needed some big plays uh, to happen. But either way, there's still no excuse. 68 yards rushing on the day. Um, <clears throat> as we talked about that, and I'm just offering this up. Don't kill me, okay? okay. I'm going right. to offer this up, all right. all right? As we talked about the defensive line and saying that the defensive line made it where the linebackers could not play to their full potential, all right, because guys were getting dra- driven, driven back. The same can be said about the offensive line that did not have their best showing. And so while we're hoping for these gaping holes uh, for Zeke and company to run through, they just didn't have it. Mm-hmm. Um, and more money, more problems. This, this is <laughs> this is true. This is true. Uh, but there was no way that they could, you know, grease <laughs> that situation <laughs> to get to to get better yards. So <laughs> this was, it was tough, man. It was a tough outing for our running backs, man. And and I think when you come to Baltimore, coming to Baltimore, that's one of the things that you have to establish in order to make that defense respect you. Otherwise, man, you're going to be facing this problem all season long, playing from behind with a defense that's not designed to play from behind. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be tough if you don't get this running game to start. I know. I'm trying to run Zeke out there, man. You know, it's just, it's just not 2016 Zeke man. at all. It's, it's not at all. Know, watching him and Dak, man. You know, it seems like yesterday they used to watch the show, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stop, man. You gotta, man. To, you gotta, you gotta stop, to, man. <laughs> Yo, you gotta stop. You gotta stop right now. All right, come on. Bad. Let's get back on track. All right. No, nah, but we, we, what are you gonna say? This offense, man. And this is something that kind of had me concerned earlier in the offseason. You, <laughs> you know, we look at this running back room. Is it gonna come down to, you know, Dak or bust when you look at this offense? You know, and I don't think the formula for success is throwing the ball 45 to 50 times a game. But when you got what you have in this running back room, that seems to be what the case is gonna be. And we look at this offense through the first two games, they haven't been that good. I don't even know if you could say they've been good. Because if you look at it outside of Aubrey's points and outside of, you know, Turpin being able to return that game, in the first, through the first two games, they scored three touchdowns right. as a whole. So 21 points as a whole. You yeah. look at what they've done in the red zone through the first two games. One of four through yeah. two games. One of four. Third down percentage. Yeah. 37%. 10 of 27. or 10, Yeah, 10 of 27 on third down That's bad. as an offense That's total. bad. So to me, it's just the lack of explosiveness. And I don't know. If it's – I don't want to say it, it's play calling because you're getting CeeDee Lamb the football. You're getting your best player the football. But 
what do you have outside of that? You know, Cooks isn't able to take advantage of his one-on-ones. He scored that one touchdown they had against the Cleveland, but he was a non-factor against the Saints. Tolbert got him his one, one explosive play. Other than that, where are you going with it? Yeah. And it's not like Ferguson was tearing it up that first game. He did get injured, but that was later on in the game. That's yeah. what you got, though, man. It's, they ain't, going, they ain't going nowhere. It's what yeah. you got. You know, the that's bad what the, the tools. Twice. He has can his tools. Yeah. Can, are, can, can, can yeah. he overcome the lack of explosive weapons on this team? And for the money, look. He's not the only guy in the league. You know, we, you know, <laughs> you know what? And this is something Clarence Hill talked about. More money, less weapons. Yeah. Yeah. But that's... If Look, you go have to figure true. it out. Hey, w- what do we get? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, if we're gonna give Will McClay and company credit for for drafting these these defensive players that have come in and, and become all pros, we have to go on the other side too. Where's Tober's pr- production? You know, these guys that you relying on J- Brooks, Jalen Brooks, he made the team. Where's that production? You, you're giving these guys opportunities. This is these are rare opportunities. <laughs> these are rare Her opportunities. Tom Brady be like, yeah, I ain't going back. Nah, going back. But you know, <laughs> but and you know what's so funny to hear Tom Brady on the air. He's the only person that really can speak to situations like that mm-hmm. because he won a championship with Danny Amendola. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he did. He, he didn't did. have weapons. Chris Hogan. Come on, Randy LaFell. I mean, and, and the thing is, like you ask it, Julian you, Edelman on you, Juice. You're looking at guys like this that are averaging 700, 800, you know, yards, and this is like four or five guys <laughs> that that are, you know, as far as the, the the receiving is concerned. But he always had that running back room. He yeah. still was able to be efficient on third down. And that's the part, as you're talking about, like, can Dak carry all of this by throwing the ball 45 times a game? Yeah, you could do it, but you got to be efficient on third down. And if, you're, and, if you're, and if you're turning the ball over on downs or you're punting and giving the ball away, that's not giving you extra possessions. And that's still like last season, we started just like this. We started slow. The offense started to look mm-hmm. like we couldn't – CD and Dak couldn't find a connection, connection through through four games. And even though – even <laughs> on that touchdown pass to, to CD from Dak, man, that was a – I mean, you just have a safety being overzealous over the top and over-pursuing, and he's able to break. But that's still throwing into double coverage. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you're going to see that all year long, especially when these other guys aren't able to win their, win, win their matchups. And a first-place schedule. And a first-place schedule. Yeah. So here's my question. Dang. Do we see Dalvin Cook against the Ravens? I think you have to. I, I just, I truly think you have to. I mean, we, you got, you know, a guy in Deuce who's more of a specialized player. Get him in the open field, screen passes. And that's what I think personnel-wise they may need to do a little switch up because you've seen those plays going to Zeke last game where they, you know, let me throw it to Zeke in the flat. Let me give him a screen here. Let me give him a draw play here. Yeah. When in, in all reality, to keep it fair, he just doesn't have that type of ability anymore. Not the same Zeke. So who goes to the bench if Dalvin Cook plays? The running backs? Uh, Deuce Vaughn. Yeah, I think he he, he yeah. just doesn't bring... Yeah, Deuce Vaughn. I mean, he this... has to. Yeah. Really? <sighs> because I think, <clears throat> would you, to me, I think I would, I would say that Rico Dattle and Cooks, even with what I hadn't seen, are the most explosive players. Okay. So, who's the third guy to touch the ball with the running backs last Sunday? Zeke. Yeah, it was Zeke. Yeah, it was. And maybe, and maybe you may have to do that. And if you're talking about special teams, if Turpin is hurt, who's taking his spot? Man, Deuce Vaughn going to be back then. That's true. Yeah. Just, just, That's true. When we start looking at, at who's going to sit to play Cooks, uh, Dalvin Cook, yeah, you have what, to swap big for big. One of the, one of the things that I, I I took away from that uh, yesterday from Coach McCarthy, he was talking about the the translation of the offense to Dalvin Cook, just saying that he didn't feel like he had a full grasp of it right now. And if that's something that's concerning <laughs> them right now, then obviously they're not going to put him in there to blow plays with him in the game. So he's going to have to be up to speed. And I, I know these guys are smart; they're getting this playbook, is zone right, zone left, whatever. They mm-hmm. they know exactly what they're doing. It's just terminology. Uh, but right. Right now, as you were talking about with when with Malik Davis and them telling you, yeah, yeah, he looks good, he, and you never know because we haven't gotten that opportunity to actually see him in real time and real action. And so, if he could benefit them, 
obviously he would have been out there last week if they felt that way. So mm-hmm. knowing the playbook or not, <laughs> somebody would have said, we call in this play. These are your three plays when you get in the game. <laughs> all you got to do. That's all you got to do. We're not going to audible out of this. And so, look, man, it's, it's a tough go right now. And you have to find this running game uh, this week. You got to find mm-hmm. it this week. Ravens coming to town. <laughs> Man, you are. It's a wrong yo, you, time you, for yo, that. Thank you, heck, man. Yo, we're man out of time. You gotta, we're out of time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We are. That boy good. Time. That boy good. That ain't boy. It? Chris it, Bean, producer Chris Bean, we appreciate you. Josh, wow. Jazz, everybody who's a part of the Players Lounge brought to you by Aristocrat Gaming. I'm Newey Scruggs. We'll talk to you tomorrow. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!